Suddenly I feel a lot older than I thought I was. <laughs> okay. Um, so last April, my wife and I uh, had a baby girl. And when we had her, I told my wife that I wanted to teach our daughter to be a ninja pirate. And she didn't really know what I meant by that, so this is sort of my explanation to the two of them. Um, and in the process, I also found out how much my daughter was teaching me about what it means. So I'm going to talk about three things here. We're going to talk about ninjas, we're going to talk about pirates, and we're going to talk about babies. Ah. <laughs> Okay, when I talk about ninjas, what I'm really talking about here is ninja skills, about training your body and your mind to their limits. But that's difficult. We all have jobs, we're all busy. So how do you find time for this kind of ninja training? Well, to help us with this, we can look to words of wisdom from a great 1980s educator, Mr. Miyagi, an early advocate of project-based learning and mastery orientation. In the movie Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi taught his student, Daniel-san, with simple chores like paint the fence, sand the floor, wax on, wax off. <laughs> and although these things seemed like difficulties to Daniel at first, in fact, they were all training opportunities in disguise. So last April, when my daughter was born, suddenly there were all sorts of new difficulties in our lives. When she was first born, oftentimes she wouldn't fall asleep unless she was being held and sung to and walked for 20 minutes at a time. And while this seemed like a difficulty, it was also an opportunity for me to learn 20 minutes worth of bossa nova music that I had loved for years but never bothered to learn the lyrics to. I'm also a big fan of martial arts, and I've been training for years. But it's difficult to train when you have a little one crawling on your legs. Or, or it's an opportunity for progressive resistance training and I'm really curious as how my strong my legs will be when she is fully grown. This has the side benefit of also rocking her to sleep after about 50 reps, in which case then you can practice your ninja stealth training as you are trying to get out of the room. So, our ninja training manual, what can we learn from this? Well, first of all, believe it or not, we all have plenty of time for ninja training. The problem is, most of us spend our free time doing something that looks like this. And while there's nothing wrong with looking at phone apps, per se, there is something a little bit unbalanced about it. So instead, we need to find balanced ninja training that involves your physical, emotional, intellectual, and ethical. And if it's 2 o'clock in the morning and you can't get back to sleep, it's an opportunity to practice mindful breathing there's always an opportunity and an appropriate type of training. So what's stopping us from doing this? Why don't we all just get on with our ninja training journey? Well, the primary obstacle, in my mind, is fear. Fortunately, there is another archetype that can help us deal with these fears, bringing us from ninjas to pirates. Pirates are rebels who are willing to hijack a ship or a situation to meet their own needs. Pirates are fearless, and this is why kids love them. But notice that pirates, uh, kids don't love the real pirates that kill people and do nasty stuff. They love the heroic pirates. They love the Robin Hoods. They love the ethical pirates. They love pirates like Rosa Parks who on December 1st, 1955, hijacked the racist bus system in Montgomery, Alabama. They love pirates like Claudette Colvin, who eight months prior to Rosa Parks, at the age of 15 years old, refused to give up her bus seat on the same bus system, went to prison, and it was her case, not Rosa Parks, that eventually went all the way to the Supreme Court and desegregated the Montgomery bus system. So what can these pirates, these brave people, tell us about conquering our fears? Well, some of our fears are social. We want to be liked. Turns out that despite popular belief that everyone likes pirates, in fact, many people don't, particularly authority figures. So the next time you see a student 
trying to hijack your class or your lesson, ask yourself, is this student engaged in wanton pirate destruction? Or is the student an ethical pirate trying to hijack your lesson to meet their own learning needs? We're also afraid of failure. Even pirates don't want to fail. They're very strategic in choosing which ships to attack. In the case of Claudette Colvin, she allied with ninja slash lawyer Thurgood Marshall, who would go on to become the first black Supreme Court justice in the United States. Ninja allies are key. But finally, we're afraid of the unknown. And this is probably the most difficult and the most nebulous of all of our fears. Which brings us to part three, the figure who can help us deal with our fears of the unknown, my daughter, Hazel Swanson, ninja pirate. <laughs> Hazel is constantly practicing her ninja training. When she was first learning how to stand up, she would wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning to get in extra repetitions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she is also constantly trying to hijack things for her own training purposes, in this case, teething. Uh, but most of all, Hazel has this fearlessness and this sense of awe and wonder when it comes to the own unknown that for me is truly awe-inspiring and a little bit scary at times. But every time she falls and gets a bump, within minutes, she's back up again, trying again with this sense of wonder. A pessimist sees the difficulty in every opportunity, but an optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. What opportunities are there right now, right here, to train like a ninja, to be fearless like a pirate, and to embrace the unknown with the wonder of a child? Find that, and you too will be practicing the way of the ninja pirate. Thank you.